Um, I'm cognizant of your time. I know that you have another obligation coming up. And so I thought it might be useful to move towards closing this. I, I, people are going to wonder how it was that we came to have a conversation. Yes. And so maybe you could shed some light on that. And because yes. I'm curious, I'm well, curious about it as well. I got turned on to you from a friend of mine about four years ago, maybe three years ago. And I started listening to a lot of what you were saying and many of the things you, you said I had been thinking about, but I heard you putting them into words and context. I was like, what? That's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm trying to get to. I found, um, uh, and it, a lot of it goes back to talk about self-determination, which we've talked about a lot about and you're self-authoring. And then you hear, you hear, you see a lot of those threads through my book, maybe in a different way, in a more folksy way, but a lot of what you've said gave me confidence to go, i I'm going to put my story on paper. Um, so I thank you for that. And that's why I thank you my in, the, pleasure. In, the back of the, in the back of the book. You know, I reached out um, to you, uh, I guess, a year and a half ago or so. And you and I chatted and I've stayed in contact with your, with your daughter. Um, you know, uh, your definition, one of the great simple things and I said earlier, sometimes just to re -understand, understanding a word differently. I've always had trouble in a bad, tough relationship, an awkward relationship with, with, with many words, but my late, my two that I've had the longest trouble with are vulnerability and humility. Yeah, those are tough they're, ones. They're tough ones. So humility, I, you know, okay, be humble. Well, for, 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 for you decades, be humble. I lost confidence when I was humble. I, right. I, I feigned false modesty. Which, yeah. I felt, which I knew at the time, that's arrogant. What are you doing? Do right, it. absolutely. You, it's very difficult to, to, be, to have humility without being arrogant about it. Weirdly what enough. You said, and correct me if I, if I misquote you, it's humility is knowing you have more to learn. You're either in love with what you know or you're in love with what you don't know, and there's a lot more of what you don't know, so pick your love carefully. Oh, well, that, I went, oh. I purchase, I'm in on that. But for the first time when I see that, I'm not shrinking. I'm actually standing taller. Mm -hmm. My heart's higher, my chin's higher. My shoulders right, are further back. Right, right. I That's have more courage right. going forward yeah. because, oh, 100%. <laughs> I, I can rely on that until I'm gone and maybe even further than that. Yes, I have more to learn, I purchase. But now I can go forward with confidence of actually what I do know, what I have built. I can have more courage. I can forgive easier. I can, I can, I can take responsibility with more courage. Um, I can take care of the things I've built and to attend those gardens better with, with, with that understanding of humility. So for that, I thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's a humility. I, I, it's a form I of have courage. A, I, 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 I want to throw a little funsy out there for you. <laughs> okay. So while I was writing, and I've, I've become a fan, which I'd love to continue talking with you more about this subjective eye and objective. We in the third eye, sort of the jumbotron of our life, when we hop out of ourselves and have a look or we project forward in our lives and say, who am I in 10 years? Or what would my eulogy be? You see, I write a lot about these things in, in, in the book. But while I was writing, I hopped out. I, I gave myself the pleasure one night after uh, uh, a few sips, and it was late at night. And mind you, the most trouble, I was, I'm happy to say this, the hardest thing about going to write this book for me was making myself go to bed. I was putting 17 hours a day, 17 hour days in, and I was just like, you got to get some sleep. But anyway, one of these nights where I was in the fever pitch on fire writing, I wrote down some, I hopped outside of myself and said, I'm going to write reviews from people that, I think this is what they would say about this book after reading. <laughs> and this is one of them. That's a great that way to become aware of your audience or of the audience you want to have. Well, that, and you have that, to that, speak that, to an audience when you're writing, obviously. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's a very subjective experience, but I think there's, there is another, as you said, the, the good thing about 
talking to oneself in the third person is it's a different view of awareness. It's an objective awareness back at like, oh, am I actually doing what I intended to do? Is what I intended actually being recorded? Is what being re- is being recorded actually what's being received? There could be a lot of gaps in between those things. And I'm trying to come up with those gaps, right? So um, I hopped outside of myself and wrote a, uh, uh, um, a <laughs> wrote a, uh, um, which, what I thought you would say about green lights. And Matthew McConaughey, the author. <laughs> it's entrance level understanding to master class psychology delivered in a folk song. I mean, the guy's got the gift of gab, man. What can I say? Jordan Peterson. <laughs> That's quite remarkable because that is very close to what I thought. You know, I, so I think you nailed it. Um, you did a it's very difficult to put forward a message without being propagandistic. And the best way to do that is to tell stories. And Mm. your book is full of stories and, and the stories seem to me to add up to a life well lived and that's a good model. And so it's a model, but it's also not put forth as a model. So it doesn't suffer from the flaws of, the flaws that might come along with that putting forth, you know, it's, and I guess that's because you stayed contemplative. I mean, one of the things I've tried to do in my lectures is to remember that I'm lecturing to me as right. well. You know, I'm part of the audience. If I'm talking about how we might behave, I mean, we, I don't yeah. think that I'm outside of the problems that I'm discussing. Those two are not a contradiction. If more of us can understand that we're talking to ourselves as well. Yes. Well, it takes the sting out of things and it it keeps you on the ground. So, well, I think that's quite funny that you wrote that review. And it's also quite funny that it is in line with with what I thought Uh, when I read the book. I should show the book again, since this is a good time to do that. And, and, you know, that's the cover of of, uh, with my picture on it. But underneath that is is the really cool thing that sort of is the is the is the symbol. That's the metaphor that I'm playing with, which is all the red and yellow lights that we have in our life, the hardships, the crises, is in the rear view mirror of life, at least via lessons learned, we're, we'll reveal green light assets that we needed. Um, it's not denying the crisis, you know, of even the death of a loved one, but it is saying, oh, there were lessons even in that. And I would offer, I wonder, you know, Jordan, if some of these lessons, we know we're going to learn them when we're in the crisis. Some we don't know till next month. Some we're probably not going to know to our deathbed. And I would argue that some will never be realized until maybe our great, great, great grandkids realize them three generations from now. And yeah. there's a green light in this year we're in right now. Big green lights in this big red light year of COVID and social unrest and, 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 and political distrust and, and, and people having to redefine who they are and what politics is and what's fairness and what's equality and all the, this in the extremes that we're in. There's a big, there's big green lights that will be revealed out of this year. Don't know when, but more than optimistic, I think realistic that that's going to be true. Well, that's an excellent place to end. I would say thank you very much. It's it's been a pleasure talking to you and I deeply appreciated the acknowledgement and I'm very pleased that my work has contributed to what you've produced. Ha! I also get a kick out of the fact that our books are chasing each other on the top 10 list on Amazon. So I think that's quite well. It's a privilege and it's an impossible privilege. And so I'm very pleased to see that. And I wish you the best of luck. I hope that we get a chance to talk again. I enjoyed that very much. I did too. Good, good. And hopefully the audience will respond in the same way. I think so. So thanks for taking the time, eh? My pleasure, Jordan. I very much appreciate it. I look forward to the next time. Um, Good to see you, sir. Good to see you too. Ciao.